Hello everyone. Hi, how are you? This is Kay. So today is the uh, 1st of July 2023 on Saturday. So I hope you're having a great weekend today. And welcome back to my another live stream today. So uh, today is Saturday, so the markets are closed. So usually I talk about some psychology topics, all the risk management topics. So today uh, I haven't thought of uh, what topics to talk about. So uh, let me first uh, check your comments and uh, see how you're doing. And then uh, we move on. Okay, so uh, yeah, today this is like, just like a relaxing live stream session. So um, yeah, uh, please uh, have your tea or coffee on your hand and just relax and enjoy the live stream till the end today. So for me today, I have been a bit busy. I have been creating some YouTube shorts. You know, recently I started my YouTube shorts uh, here. If you can come to my YouTube page and click on the shorts, then um, you find a couple of shorts. Today I shared the philosophy of, the, of Ichimoku and also uh, yesterday I shared, or the day before, I shared how to avoid losing big in trading. So I keep sharing these uh, small shorts so that uh, hopefully fills gap on your knowledge and enjoy these uh, small video clips. I share also shorts in Instagram and Facebook. So <clears throat> if you are following me on one of these medias, you can also find these shorts. Okay, yeah, so I have been creating some shorts uh, to upload next week. Actually, for the next two weeks, I have already created some shorts. So, um, you're gonna keep enjoying. And also, um, in terms of the YouTube, I have been creating some videos. Now, I'm thinking to do some uh, candlesticks lectures. Uh, a day, a couple of days ago, I shared inside a bar strategy, and I get many comments that uh, people like it. So I think I will do the next series of candlesticks. Um, when it comes to candlestick patterns, there are so many, like millions of names, millions of patterns in candlesticks. But simply, I use basically five patterns. And these five basic candlesticks are called um, Sakata Goho in Japanese. This is also original Japanese candlestick strategies. And based on these five, mostly, um, you know, uh, now we have so many. So if you understand these five basic ones, then I think you'll be able to apply some other forms of candlesticks also. So inside, I shared it uh, last week, and next week I will share outside bar, and also uh, P wave, and some other um, some other uh, candlestick patterns on YouTube. <clears throat> and also, I have a lot to say about psychology, trade psychologies. So I'm thinking to uh, check some comments on my live streams and videos, and uh, I make videos in terms of replying those comments. So I have been selecting what would be the interesting comments to cover, so that's why I was busy today. And also, I created the introduction and also um, end roll for these videos today. I recorded myself and edit myself and I, I created these. So when you see the next video, then you will see something different from the beginning and the end of the videos. So I hope you enjoy those uh, new uh, style on the videos. 
So, uh, yeah, how have you been today? This is Saturday, so yeah, I think you're relaxing also today. All right, so now let me check some comments. All right, um, Nathaniel, good to see you. Thank you very much for joining. Yeah, as for the market analysis, let me do tomorrow. Tomorrow, I do the weekly forecast. So I will talk about the markets tomorrow and next week. Today, let's focus on some psychology of trades. Okay, FRL, thanks for joining. And Roger, good to see you too. Thank you very much for joining. It's been a while. Yeah, thank you very much for joining. Welcome back here. And Matt Maniac, good to see you too, as always. Thank you for joining. Christopher, also, thank you very much for joining. Good to see you. Okay, Rain, thank you for joining also. Good to see you. So today, you can ask me any questions about trading or about my life in general because this is just like a free talk session today on Saturdays. Okay. Oh, I have one question to everyone actually. If you can reply, that would be great too. But my question is, I actually typed it here. Oh, I think this is too small. Uh, when do you feel like stop trading is my question. So let me just make it bigger, just hold on. When do you feel like stop trading? What do you think? Let's start from this topic first. In the meantime, let me continue to check some comments. Okay, Freedom, thank you for joining. Good to see you. What app is best for Forex? I would say TradingView is the best. I do charting on TradingView and it's been really great. Before I start YouTube, I didn't know about TradingView because I have been analyzing and trading by MetaTrader. But after I started to use TradingView, then I found that it's really clean and more easy to chart. And also, um, it actually, you know, the settings are saved on multiple devices. So let's say you draw a line on the PC or you show the indicators in the PC. And when you open mobile on TradingView, then it's reflected. So, and when you actually also use a tablet, open TradingView, and the lines and the, the alerts and the chart settings are all uh, saved. So, yeah, it's really handy and really nice to me. Okay, Sean, good to see you. Thank you very much for joining. Yep, good to see you and thank you very much for being a part of Ichimoku community. Thank you very much. Ichimoku community is working where you can study the original knowledge of Ichimoku from the original books. Today, after this, there will be an Ichimoku um, live stream. And today, I'm thinking to share some words from the original book today and that is about uh, easy to learn and difficult to do and that's something that uh, Goichi Hosoda was mentioning on the book here so I will share that today but like this on Saturdays I covered philosophies of Ichimoku books and Wednesdays, I cover time theory and some other Ichimoku knowledges. So, yeah, I hope you continue to learn Ichimoku philosophy and also some essence of it. Okay, Venkat, thank you for joining. Vishal, good to see you. Thank you very much for joining. Okay, Freedom says, Ich is Ichimoku best and will work even in commodities? Yes, they do. Yeah. Okay. Pound JP are reaching new levels. I think it's bullish, but let me do deeply tomorrow on the weekly forecast. All right. Photo, good to see you. Okay. Abi Boy says, Where do you live, sir? I live in Dubai. This is in Dubai. Today, the skies is so clear. So uh, it's really nice. This week, the sky was really foggy and a bit dusty but today it's so clear so i feel very fresh i actually went outside today 
enjoy the fresh air today. Now, temperature wise, it's getting higher. It's close to 40 degrees in Celsius. So it's really hot. So summer's almost here in Dubai. Okay, again, thanks for joining. Good to see you. All right, and Kevin, thank you very much for joining also. Okay, good to see you. Good to see you. Thank you very much. Okay, Jamie says, what is the most common mistakes you find people do in your KTS GTS course? Um, common mistakes, I would say the psychology management. Like even if you master, even if you learn my strategy in terms of when to trade and when to exit, um, sometimes people have difficulties in psychology to follow. So I have to remind every time. So if that's not the timing, don't trade. Be patient, then don't trade. I think that also, that's one of the biggest challenges among the members. I would say, um, I think, um, uh, how do you say, like, uh, trading is also, of course, a job as a trader, but not to trade. You know, not to trade is also the job, I think. It's like equal for me. So I am a full-time trader and trading is my main source of income. And I look at charts every day, but it doesn't mean that I trade every day. Or I don't trade every time I screen charts. When I don't see any opportunities, then I don't take trades. So less is more is really true in trading and but for example if it's not the time to trade but if you still do if you force yourself to trade then you may go against the rules or you may be uh, emotional to trade just because you want to make profits but you may lose and so psychology is that uh, if you win the trade, then it's okay still. You didn't follow the strategy, you didn't follow rules, but you jumped in and you make profits, it is okay as a result. But the real problem is when you lose. When you lose by ignoring the rules and strategies, then you may blame yourself that you, will, you, won, you weren't able to uh, hold yourself uh, and also prevent yourself from trading by going against the rules and strategies. And also, um, you may be tough on yourself. Psychologically, it will be very stressful. So, to make the losses as a part of the process, you have to follow rules and Especially if you're new to the trend follow strategy, or if you're new to my strategy itself, then at first it may be struggling. Because uh, usually more is more is the basic education. So the more you trace, the more you make profits is usually common, usually in the common sense. But my strategy is not. So there's a gap between those. So. I think that's one of the common mistakes. But um, when I see their screenshots of trades, and also, especially in the GTS, when I talk 101, or when I do the sessions every week, then I correct them. I know exactly what they're doing by screenshots, and I can correct and guide through to, towards the right way. So, yeah, that's the... That's usually the case. So, yeah, like uh, it's like like the same as a sports cars or like any cars. Sports cars are fast on the road, but it can't go off road. Um, but uh, let's say SUVs are uh, a bit slower, maybe nowadays it may not, but as compared to the sports car, it may not be stable 
um, on the road more than sports car, but SUVs can go off-road easier than sports cars. So each strategy has different characters and each indicators also are looking at some different perspectives among the markets. So if you don't really understand the essence of what this strategy is trying to do, and if you don't follow it, then it may harm you also at the same time. So that's what I find. Yeah, so learning strategy is almost like learning the philosophy of it. And that's why I share Ichimoku philosophies in my communities. Okay. Okay, so, um, yeah, so again, today, let me just ask you one question uh, here. When do you feel like stop trading? Just let me know. Okay, I think I will cancel the windows. Just hold on. Then go like this. Okay, in the meantime, let me check some more comments. All right, good to see you everyone. Thank you very much for joining. Kevin, thank you for reminding the like button. Thank you very much. If you liked it, please press the like button before you leave. That would be great. Okay. How much money did you start with? I started with uh, 10,000 USD and I blew account. Then recreated another 10,000, 10, then lost a half. Then I came back to demo account, back tested it for about six months, and then proved myself that it works, then start trading again on the live account. Another 10,000. It's been a rough journey. It took me like three years to be stably profitable. Okay, Sean says, uh, I stopped trading after two losses for the day. Okay, okay, so that's a good rule. If you lose twice per day, then you stop trading. That's very good. So that you don't, you don't lose more. Yeah, we have to think about the reasons of the losses when you actually lose. The losses do not happen by chance. There should be some reasons for the losses. You may have missed something important. Maybe you didn't look at the high or low, the major resistances or the supports, or major wicks on the candles, or you may missed the shape of the Kumo or Chikospan uh, location. Um, so when you lose especially, there is a great lesson. So that's why I say you have to record your trays and manually record your trays and also possibly take screenshots of your entries and exits. And especially when you lose, you look back, you're losing trays only. Towards the end of the month, like today or tomorrow on Saturday or Sunday, you can look back your trays in the month of June and only pick the losing trace. It's painful. It is painful to face the losing trace because you may not want to see it again. You might want to move forward instead. But this process is really important because if you keep looking at these losing streaks and losing patterns, then you find the patterns of, lo of the losses. Um, you may be trading, uh, for example, USD pairs, and if you look at these losing trades, those are all USD pairs. Well, that means next time when you take trades, USD pairs, you extra careful or maybe pass that opportunity and trade other pairs. That's one of the options to avoid these uh, losing patterns, for example. Or like I mentioned before, if you didn't check high time frames, or if you didn't know what weekly time frame was doing, and if you look back, you're losing trades, there are 
uh, weekly resistances. Near the weekly resistances, and that's why every time we enter trade buy, it retraced when against your direction. So that might also be the case also. So um, losses are the part of the process if you learn from it. If you didn't if you don't learn from the losses, then those are those are just becoming painful experiences. But uh, I would say that you you will find wisdom on your losing trades much more than your winning trades. So this is a way to become a non-losing trader. Yeah. So I have my own losing patterns, and every month it's different. Um, and every year it's different also. Um, so when I look at these losing patterns, sometimes I, whenever I lose, I use the specific indicator, for example. Then I lose, or specific confirmations, and then I lose. So next time I don't use that, for example, and continue to trade. Whenever I find opportunities, I continue to trade, but edit my strategy, edit the way of my entries, uh, and take trades. Regarding the exit timings also, maybe uh, may uh, improved also, because when you lose, after you lose your positions, then the market may go towards your direction, but without your positions. In that case, it's either your stop loss is, is too small or your exit timing was too early. Yeah, just because you don't want to lose big, your exit timings were a bit too early. So you had some losses, but if you held it for a long time, then you may have been making profits on these losing trades. Maybe you saw that example before, but um, when you find that patterns, then uh, why not having bigger stop losses on your next trades and uh, continue to trade and see how it goes. So especially losses are the source of the great lessons. So you have to respect the losing trades and try to learn from them. This is like trial and error process. Or like a research process. When it's successful, then it's okay. But uh, I think avoiding some losses, avoiding some losing patterns, and stopping those losing patterns are more easier than finding some winning patterns, I think. So eventually, you win bigger than your losses. So that's the lose small and win big strategy. So like I say, this is something I say also in the KTS or GTS classes is that um, you, can think of, you can think about which one is easier to take big profits or to have small losses. Uh, and clearly, to have small losses is much more easier because you just exit your trade manually and you can lose small manually. But every time you enter trades, you never know how many pips it goes. Sometimes it goes 10 pips only, then retrace, or goes uh, to like 50, 50 pips and retrace, or 100 pips and retrace, or more. But um, you never know when you enter trades. But one thing for sure is that when you exit a trade, then you know how many pips you lose. And this is about the risk management, but uh, every time you enter trades, if you know when to exit properly, then um, when you have the bigger pips and profits, then those winning trades should cover the previous small losses, is my strategy, and also my mindset. So. Yeah, so that's my comment on that one. Yeah, but that's a that's a good lesson actually. Uh, that's a good habit. You know, uh, you lose, you stop trading after having two losses. That's really important. Okay, so let me check some more comments. 
Okay, good to see you, good to see you. AD says, uh, from Tanzania, good to see you. He says, now I understand Ichimoku and I use it in my trace. Thank you, uh, K. you help people a lot. I like the way you teach Ichimoku. Oh, thank you very much, your comment. And it's my pleasure to share my knowledge here in the communities. Okay, all right, good to see you, good to see you. Okay, Yan says, I feel, I feel stop trading after when sold um, stick to uh, stock, sorry, when, when sold stock, it break ATH and when I buy stock, it breaks ATL. Um, ATH means like high and ATL means low, I think. Oh yeah, so whenever the market is resisted, or support it, then you stop trading. And yeah, I think that's also a good strategy, I mean, good rule. So, yeah. Okay, so let me check some more comments. John says, I stop trading when the entire market is retracing. I have yet to be successful in retracing markets. Right, whenever the market's retracing, then that's not the best timing to trade. Yeah, it's not the best timing to trade. So, when it's retracing, my advice is not to trade. Okay, Binak says, about the question, I feel like stopping to trade when I have lots of losses in a day. Okay, okay, so if you have losses in a day, then you stop trading, but um, you can you can be more specific, like how many losses in a day, then you stop trading, like two or three, you can actually uh, be more exact, and uh, yeah, exact and uh, continue to uh, yeah continue to improve your trades. I think that's really important. Okay, Typejack says, I find it hard to stop sometimes because the market has many opportunities. Once I get a few good trades, I take the dog for a walk and giving myself a good break. That's good. That's good, yes. That's also what I practice. Um, when I find my trades are in the losses or if I can find any opportunities, then I do totally something else. Yeah, I don't look at other markets. I don't really uh, check, you know, uh, different time frames. But rather, I close the charts and completely do something else. Maybe I play the violin, or um, I learn Arabic. I'm learning Arabic now, and tomorrow I have a lesson. It's a one-on-one, face-to-face, so it's great. But uh, I learn Arabic, or I do something else completely. And that refreshes my mindset when I come back next time to the, to the markets. So yeah, taking the dog for a walk is a great idea. Yeah, I used to do that when I was in Japan. Oh, by the way, in terms of the violin, I will be, I will be sharing one of the videos soon on my second YouTube channel. So please look forward to it. Okay, okay. Kevin says, I stop trading when markets range. Okay, that's good, that's good. Okay. So yeah, this is important to discuss. We tend to discuss uh, when to trade, but it's also important to discuss when not to trade. So let me revise, revise the question. When do you stop trading? Is the simple question now. Okay. Okay, Manish says, uh, how are you? I know trends and know when to enter, but due to some pressure to make money and have to pay debt, I risk more and less all 
4% profit in pro from challenge. Um, okay, so that's another uh, uh, comment or another perspective about importance in terms of the risk management. Um, thank you, for, first of all, for your comment. Um, paying the debt by trading is very difficult, I would say, because because not only that you won't be able to find opportunities, but also um, when you lose, psychology will hit you and you may get frustrated very much. So that's why I say you have to have two wallets, the wallet to live and a wallet to trade. And these should not be mixed whatsoever. So let's say we have you have um, $10,000 in your saving and you have monthly income from, from a job. So never touch on one wallet and create the second wallet for trading only. Create another another 10,000 or 1,000 or 5,000 dollars and trade only with that wallet. Never touch the living money. This is very, very important in terms of the risk management in life also. Because if you trade with the living money, then if you keep losing and losing, then when you see the numbers going down on your saving account, then you get very frustrated. But and then as you frustrate more, then you may overtrade or you may revenge trade and you will feel more formal and it won't be really good in terms of psychology. But if you trade with a saving with the money to trade only, then uh, your psychology will be less. Because even, even if you lose everything on this one, you can still live. So I always advise everyone to do not first quit your job too soon, have monthly income stably, and then take some percentage to trade every month. And so technically, the money to trade should be okay to lose. And if, you, if, if the money is okay to lose, then you win trades. Maybe you have experienced in the demo account. Some people says in the demo account, your performance gets much better. But on the live account, in the live money, the performance gets really bad. And that's because you, won't, you, you are not treating the live account as demo account. I hope you get what I mean. But uh, if the trading account is just like demo account, where it's okay to lose, then you, be you get better actually. Your performance will be better because psychologically, it becomes much, much easier. You have less psychology, less emotion uh, towards the losses. So I think this is one of the secrets uh, to trade in terms of psychology. So whenever you trade, never, uh, never mix your uh, saving account. Always separate and take trades at the same time. And always, um, and also in terms of demo account, this is there are pros and cons about the demo account. Uh, for the demo account, some people says you know you don't have, you don't get pressure, you don't get adrenaline on your brain going, so you won't be serious in demo trading. If you're the type, then um, you can trade with the live account, but start small. Start small like 1,000 or 5,000 and keep compounding it. Never withdraw the money, but keep compounding, keep making profits without withdrawing it, keep using, keep rolling the account as you take trades and win profits and you add more money to the account until you find enough returns to support your life. This is the safest way to 
accumulate your profits. And I say this because um, I made a big mistake when I was trading with my live account. I lost all. So it was really tough. And uh, when I lost all of a uh, $10,000 account, then I wanted to revenge. So I, I went high, much higher leverage, much higher risk per trade. And I didn't put the stop losses back then. So I kept holding, holding the trade until I make profits. And I fail. Very bad. So, yeah, please uh, use two wallets, is my advice. Yeah. So, trading is all about psychology, I think. Um, strategy part is so really easy because it's a logic. But psychology is not about the logics. Psychology is about emotion and it's different among everyone. Okay, which time frame support works the best? I would say the daily time frame support works the best. Okay, James, there is something in my trading journey I'm missing but cannot put my finger on it. I follow process as strict and to the rules but still not making pips overall. So that must be something missing. There must be something missing on your entries or risk management. So you have to continue to improve your trades. Um, I recommend you to backtest manually your trades, at least take 50 trades and see your performance. If you backtest manually, take 50 trades and if your performance is good, the most likely your performance in live market is also good. But if your performance in backtesting is not so good, then you will get worse in live account, live market. So that's something I would do to practice and improve my strategy and the way I enter trades, exit trades by backtesting until I see good numbers. Okay, Manish says, uh, please explain risk management after profit in trading account. Like if we have 4% profit, then how to manage in the next trades? So you add 4% profit on your account and risk manage again. So if you are the person who trades with the 4% profit, then let's say you, are, you start with uh, $1,000 and you make 4%, so that will be $1,040. And you take another 4% of 1040 dollars, not the original 1000 dollars. And as you keep winning the trades, you use the same percent of risk, 4%, and you continue to trade. But if you lose also, you do the same. If you lose, then you can use still 4% of your trades, but depends on what you have. If your account is now 900, then take 4% of 900, not the 10,000, not the 100, uh, not the 1,000 anymore. So, depends on what, how much you have, you risk per trade. The ratio of the risk should be fixed, no matter how much you have in your account. Okay, Warren says, uh, good day, Kason. As I remember, you said that the most important trading style change that uh, brought you to become profitable from losing is that you change the way you change away from scalping to longer trade right. Um, yeah, that's one of the changes. Yes, I used to be a scalper uh, when I first started my trading career as full time because I did well in scalping, uh, in the day trading, uh, when I was working full time for the company. And then I quit the company and um, I started my full time trading and I was completely obsessed with scalping. So I thought 
the more I take trades, the more I make profits, and that's why I decided to focus on scalpings only. But then um, I took 30 trades, 20 trades per day, and uh, I kept losing every month. So I got very tired, and I switched my strategy to more trend follow and swing trade, and it became much more successful. When I was scalping, I didn't really care what the daily time frame is doing or what higher time frame is doing. I wasn't really care about this. All I was caring was 5 minute time frame and whether I enter trades, whether the signal comes or not. So I was really narrow minded when I was trading scalping, only focusing the lower time frames. Okay. Muhammad says, when the strategy doesn't work, yeah, that's important in terms of uh, when to, when do you stop trading, when the strategy doesn't work, that's exactly right. And that's what I do too. Every time I screen charts and when I see my strategy doesn't work, then that's when I don't trade within a day. So that actually prevents me from trading in the bad timings. Okay, yeah, prop promise, I think it's good. I think it's good. Some of my students pass the prop from challenges and they become funded traders, so I think that's good. For me personally, I haven't tried the prop firms. I have been trading with my own money, but uh, I think that can be one of the options. Kevin says, when Tenkan Senkijun sends Senko Span A up, but Senko Span B flat in high time frame, should we exit the trade? Also, if Tenkan Senkijun Sen, uh, if uh, Tenkan Sen and Senko Span A and B are up, but Kijun Sen down, should we exit the trade? I have to see the chart. I have to check the live market and uh, make comments because. Um, the cat, I don't know where the candlesticks are in those cases, so I can't really reply. Yeah, it's really difficult to actually reply the you know the the comments unless I see the real charts because it depends. Okay, but basically when I see the Kumo and Kijun Sen and flat Chikou Span touching, then that's when I look for an exit timing. Okay, Wang says, I stopped trading when I broke my rule, no matter if I win or lose that trade. That's a great discipline, yes. So it's good that you broke the rule. You're humble enough to know that you broke the rule, so you don't trade. Maybe you can do push-ups, 100 times push-up when you broke the rule, <laughs> yeah, and become healthy at the same time. So that's a good rule, I think. Perun says, which broker or platform should I trade on? Earlier, the broker with whom I had open. Um, in terms of brokers, I use XM personally, XM, and it's been great for me. But um, I think brokers are different among the regions in terms of its regulations and rules. So I would recommend everyone to uh, check on your own region and what will be the best broker on your country. Yeah, back when I was in Japan, uh, XM was good. And I also had some uh, Japanese brokers as well. When I, when, I, when I was taking JPI pairs, I used to use Japanese brokers because the spread is much, much smaller. And when I take non-JPI non pairs, I used to use overseas brokers. So you can actually do some researches and find which one is the best in your region. Okay, sometimes it's really hard to stop trading in a day, especially when you want to win instantly. But that might be the time to stop for a while, personally speaking. Um, yeah, if you rush too much to make profits, then you have to take a, 
deep breath, maybe close the chart, take a deep breath, and be away for a couple of hours and come back. Yeah. Markets moving every day, every second, 24 hours, but it doesn't mean that you have opportunities every second. John says, I believe as you gain experience, you would know automatically when to stop trading for the day or week. That's right, that's right. Experience is also takes a big part when not to take trades. Yeah, like, like sometimes I also, um, even if I see Kumo up, Kijun Sen up, and even if I see some um, confirmations, entry confirmations, I don't take trades. And sometimes I can't explain why I don't take trades. I feel like, and I don't want to take trades. That's my, my honest opinion. And I don't. And even if the market goes towards my direction after that, it's totally fine with me. So it's like a, how do you say, like an instinct or like a gut feeling or like a, yeah, this, that, decision is coming from the experience that, oh, I don't want to trade in this case. I don't want to trade right now. And these candlestick patterns on five minute or one hour or daily, although I see what we call opportunities from signals, I don't want to take trades. So yeah, it happens to me from experience, yeah. Okay. Yeah, Sean, please go through your losing trades on the last months and identify your losing patterns. Until you find the losing patterns, don't trade in the month of July. Ahmed says, I stop trading when I get emotional, fear, greed, formal, also when I start second guessing the plan strategy. Sure, sure. Yes, that's good, that's good. Um, yeah, it, you know, that's, that's good comment, that's a good comment, but uh, sometimes, you know, it's di very difficult to, to s find out whether it's because of the fear, or because of the greed, or because of the formal you want to trade or not. When you're actually seeing the charts moving every second, and Especially if you look at the lower time frames and if the bar goes up, jumps up, and breaks the previous highs, then you feel like you want to jump in the market without waiting for the candles to close. In that case, that could be the greed or FOMO. Uh, or if you have some losing streaks, then you find your opportunities based on the strategy, but you don't, you hold back and you don't want to take trades because you fear of the losses on your next trades. So yeah, but when you are actually on that timing, when you're actually in front of the chart, then I think it will be very difficult to identify. But it's good, it's good that you, you know that you become emotional and um, you know how you are thinking when you have that feelings. Emotions, emotion itself doesn't speak itself. So that's why it's really difficult to really know your emotion. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Matt Manek says, I stop trading when the market con conditions are bad. Right, range in market, big news, that's right. Yeah. I want to involve trading in the news, but how long do you wait for to trade after big news release? Um, I would say if you wait one hour, the market should be settled. Yeah, usually right before the news, the markets are still very spiky and choppy. So wait until it settles down to take another trace. And usually, usually the market becomes stable in one hour after big news.
Okay. Yeah, but thank you very much for these comments. I really enjoy reading this and also replying. Okay. Um, IDK says, uh, I have made 30% this month using Ichimoku Fibonacci strategy, but I am pretty sure that was all just beginner's luck. Should I reduce my risk now to reduce my change of losing my profits? Oh, oh sorry, my chance of losing my profits. Um, yeah, so first of all, uh, making 30% of the month is great, but the question is, if you can make another 30% on the next month and throughout the year. If answer is no, then you should reduce your risk per trade. Maybe that was just beginner's luck. There's, you can't reproduce the same or similar performance every month, every year. So, yeah, I think you risk bigger and made bigger profits. So yeah, I recommend you to reduce your risk and aim for 10% per month, but stably every month. I think that's more safer. Yeah, but if your leverage is below 20 and if you made 30%, then that's great. Your risk management is great, so you keep on trading, but if your leverage was let's say 50 or 100 and made 30% this month, then that's too risky. You may lose everything next month. So yeah, just be careful in high leverage trade. Okay, so now I'm about to end the live today. So I simply uh, kept checking some of these uh, comments now. So I do see lots more comments, but um, I have to finish the live for now. So after I finish live, I come back and enjoy the rest of the comments. So I'm sorry I couldn't cover everything, but I hope you enjoyed today's live stream. So yeah, again today, in about seven minutes there will be an Ichimoku membership live and today I talk about philosophy of Ichimoku from the original books so to those who are Ichimoku members I will see you soon and to those who join public live stream here I will see you tomorrow on the weekly forecast so again thank you very much I hope you have a great weekend and until I see you next time please stay healthy stay safe and stay gold. Bye for everyone. Matane. Thank you very much.